Hi everyone, I am back with a new video and this is going to be a workspace tour of the year 2020 because I haven't done one in such a long time. But because I'm working from home now, I have decided to redecorate my workspace so that it's nice and inspiring and it motivates me to continue doing work from home, especially with the current situation that we are in. I'm also recording this in the um, old school style, I suppose. I'm just holding my camera and I'm just going to show you all of the things that are in my workspace. So please excuse any background noises that you will hear. My window is open, which is right there, and you might have just heard the train um, passing by but I will be showing you how I organize my workspace as well as my art materials inside. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of classes based on a range of different topics. And normally when I use Skillshare, I just go for the drawing tutorials, um, graphic design and animation classes. However, when I was doing this video and redecorating my space, I decided to browse for their other topics such as interior design and interior decorating classes. And one that I really liked was how to to design your creative workspace by Melanie Greenwood, as well as how to design a tiny house plus interior by Auk and Jildu, which I actually really, really enjoyed. So I will link all of those videos in the description box below so you can check them out as well if you're interested in that. In the description box is also my special link because this video is sponsored. So the first 1000 people to use that link to sign up will get two months free of their premium membership, which is normally valued at 10 US dollars a month if you pay annually. So that's two months of free unlimited content on Skillshare to help boost your creativity. So I will also have that link in the description box below. And if you are very much interested, I do highly recommend that you check out Skillshare and you use that link to sign up. So let's start with my furniture. As you can see, this is quite a unique setup. Um, I've never actually done this sort of setup before, but I have two desks stacked on top of each other. Um, and then over here, you can kind of see that the leg of this desk is resting on the drawer underneath it. Um, and that desk underneath as well is resting on the same exact drawer. I had to take out the original legs of the table in order to create this custom setup. So the two tier desks allow me to work either standing up when I'm working on the computer and sitting down when I'm drawing or doing anything that doesn't require me to use the computer. My furniture is actually all from Ikea. This desk is from Ikea. The legs that came with it were actually sold separately, but um, since I had to take them out, they were very easy to take out. The drawer underneath is also from Ikea. I believe this stool is also from Ikea. And then I have a cart underneath my sitting desk, which is also from Ikea. This one's only two tier because the three tier one couldn't fit in. So I had to get rid of the top tier and it's currently just somewhere else being unused, unfortunately. And then underneath that, I just have some wirings and tubes for my air conditioner, as well as my rubbish bin. Starting with this desk, like I said, this is where I normally draw or anything that doesn't require me to use the computer. Right next to that is actually my bed. And right here is my window. So I do have a large window that is facing west. And here in Australia, um, that actually means I don't get a lot of direct sunlight in my room, but I do get a lot of light, which is quite diffused and just very soft, which I really like. I do get a lot of afternoon light though, especially in summer. So this room gets really, really hot, but I do like my window because it allows me to um, take care of some plants and some of my plants are thriving and I'm really, really happy with that. So I'm just gonna do a bit of a plant tour as well. This one over here is the Goldilocks plant. I recently got this one. Literally, she just arrived on Saturday. Um, today is Monday. And I also created these labels um, that just helps me remember whether they need a lot of light 
or whether they need to be kept dry or kept moist because I am not super good at taking care of plants. It's only recently that my plants started thriving. So that's given me a bit of confidence to start taking care of them. And then next to that, I have some pouches or it's just one pouch um, that contains miscellaneous items. It's actually really hard to film at the moment, but I'm gonna try and show you everything that's inside some of these containers. So this one just has like old phones and cords in here that I also use for filming because even though the phones are quite slow and not as good as they were before, since iPhones tend to do that, um, the camera and quality of it is still pretty good. So I use it sometimes for filming. I also have a journal in here, which I use to write down my thoughts the same way you would use a journal. And I just keep that right next to my bed because that is usually the time that I would journal. I've had that one for years though, because I'm pretty bad at journaling nowadays, but I'm hoping to get back into it. And right now you are seeing my lucky bamboo plant. She is thriving. She has grown so tall with so many leaves and I'm so happy and she's got lots more baby leaves growing. Once again, I have my label right over here. And then next to that is my Buddha belly fig. She's also loving the light. So that's why she's in the windowsill. And then I had to add these pebbles on top. Well, my mom helped me because she loves gardening and um, everything I know about plants comes from her. So she was helping me get rid of um, pests that were um, trying to destroy my plants. And that's just what we found on the internet. And then next to that, I have a candle and then a fake plant from Ikea because like I said, I struggled with taking care of plants um, for years. I think I've had these two plants for about two years now. It was only last year that they started really growing super well. So um, before that, I stuck with fake plants for decoration. Right over here on top of my desk, I have another plant, which is the Chinese money plant. I got her as a present um, for my birthday, which was just recently. Um, she's sitting on top of this wooden case that I created out of scrap wood and then I painted it white just so it fits the aesthetic of the workspace. It allows me to store some uh, tissue, which I also put in this like DIY cardboard box. So it also fits the aesthetic of my room. And then on top of that, I have a humidifier which I also just got recently as a birthday gift and I'm loving it so much. I use the peppermint essential oil and I love the smell of it. It also helps um, unblock my congested nose, which I have normally when I wake up in the morning. And then next to that, I have some power cords. And then that's pretty much for this desk. I like to keep my desk quite clean on top because it's not a super big desk and whenever I'm working paper is like spread everywhere so I like to keep this big space as free as possible. I also have a lamp right over here. I decided to get rid of the cover or the shade so that it's not so much of a spotlight rather it spreads the light everywhere in the room when I'm using it for filming and when I'm using it for drawing. Underneath that, I have my camera, which is charging at the moment. And I also have a bunch of technology items underneath um, that space, which is actually kind of like a charging station. So underneath, I have some boxes as well at the very back. They're shoe boxes, which I use for storage for technology related items. And at the very front, I have my most used technology items, which is my MacBook Air, which is really old. I have an iPad, which I use for my digital drawings. And then I have just uh, headphones. And I'm gonna try to show you what's inside the boxes over there. So if I take this out, I have, these are my 
frequently used items not all of them but some of them are frequently used i use some of these for filming or making videos for example i have my microphone over here my um tripods mini tripods these are some old webcams that i used back then i also have um this one's a microphone stand so things like that go in here and this shoe box is actually very sturdy so i just use it as a storage that way i didn't have to buy it or anything like that then we have this corner which i'm actually quite happy with how it looks i wanted a backdrop for my instagram photos and i was working on this one and this is what i ended up creating so I'm quite happy with it hopefully I end up using it but anyway all I have here are some fake flowers because I cannot take care of flowers for the life of me same with plants um, but flowers are a little bit harder in my opinion so I've decided to just purchase these fake ones from Bunnings next to that though is a real plant which I also just recently got this is the Taueri Monstera I think that's how you say it and then right next to that I have a mug that one's a mug with some black fine liners and scissors and then a gold feather which I got from the Hamilton musical that I watched in February um, just earlier this year before the lockdown and everything and then right next to that I have some candles I really love coconut smell so I tend to buy coconut um, scented candles and then behind that is a box of stuffed animals which my boyfriend got me behind that though um, i purchased a dio lamb which is an xo um, merchandise i don't think it's official but it's the one for um dio or kyungsoo because he is my bias in xo so when i found a seller that was selling it to australia i decided to purchase it and then yeah so i just keep that over there as a memorabilia and then next to that i have my sketchbooks so i like collecting black sketchbooks and i created these labels on the spine that um, allows me to know when i started and then when i finish the this one over here i actually accidentally wrote 2020 instead of leaving it blank so it's not finished yet but i guess i'll have to finish it before the year ends I also just have a planner over here which is just easy to grab and they all sit underneath this wooden shelf which I also created out of scrap wood. I painted it white so it fits the aesthetic of the room. Same thing with that um, mini shelf over there and it has these um office supplies items so things that i actually grab very often but don't really fit in anywhere with my art supplies so i just keep all of them here they're all very easy um to access so i keep that there next to that i have some more plants so i have a spider plant that my mom got me just in the corner Underneath that, I have some fashionary products, so poses for fashion illustration, and then I have a Polaroid camera that I got for my birthday. I also have another plant here, which I also just recently got, which is why she's tiny at the moment in this large pot, but I'm hoping she grows lots of leaves, and um, she actually has a baby leaf right now, so that's really cute. And then in front of that, I have some candles and once again, a coconut scented candle. It's actually really hard to find coconut scented candles. So anytime I find one, I just instantly buy it. And then I light all of them up so that my room smells like um, coconuts. But next to that, I have a graphic tablet and then another one. I actually have two separate videos on these ones, which I will link in the card section. I have my large fashionary sketchbook, which I also have a video of, and then I just have a notebook. And in front of that, I have my water glass, glass of water, and then I have my keyboard and my mouse and my computer. And I actually created this um, drawing for my website, but I really, really liked it. So I decided to create it as a wallpaper for my um, Mac. And behind that, I have some of my recent artworks, which I 
placed on this wall along with some goals and some photos that I just really liked as well. It helps to kind of create a color palette for my workspace, but it also just allows me to see um, what I'm currently working on and hopefully to inspire me to create more artwork so that in the future I can replace the artworks that are in here with newer ones that I really, really like. And then I have a shelf on top which contains some folders at the very corner over there. So the black ones actually are folders that contain old artworks as well as some space for new ones. So anytime I create a new artwork, it all goes in there. I have my sketchbooks, which are all old and they're all labeled. I have fake flowers for decorations, fake plants for decorations, candles, a piggy bank, and a um, snow globe that I got as gifts. And then I have a frame up there with an artwork of mine. And then I have this blank space, hopefully for um, art materials that I purchase in the future. So I just wanted to keep it blank to remind myself that I've got space for growth as well as experimentation. And then right here, I have my guitar and my ukulele, which I've decided to put next to my workspace or along with my workspace because music is another creative outlet that I really enjoy. So I wanted to put all of the things that I love into one place so that hopefully it inspires me and it motivates me to continue working. So now let's move underneath my standing desk. So you've already seen this drawer, but on top of that, I have makeup on my right because I actually have a mirror next to this desk. But then I also have a printer, which is the Canon TS9160. And I have a my die on top of that. And then I have my drawer underneath, which I've actually categorized into different sections based on what media it is, as well as how frequently I grab for these items. So the first drawer looks like this. And I'm just gonna try and find a better angle as well so it's easier for me to film. So this is what it looks like. And I've created this black divider out of cardboard, I mean, sorry, foam core board. And this contains my dry media. So things like pencils as well as pens and inks go in here. So first off, we have my erasers and sharpeners, my pencil leads, mechanical pencils, um, sketching pencils, more sketching pencils, but these ones are a little bit more special because they are charcoal, Conte, graphite, stuff like that. I have my favorite sketching pencils, which are actually the Lyra Rembrandt color pencils. They're not actually for sketching, but I use them for sketching. As you can see, this one is my favorite. This is the Venetian red color. And I have my Prismacolor pencils. So I have culled down and decluttered a lot of my art materials. So this is currently what I only have. And my Prismacolors I first bought as a set, but there were so many colors that I didn't like. So I decided to um, only keep the ones that I liked and I knew that I was going to use. And then the other ones I donated. So these ones are um, pastel warm colors cool colors, and then these are my most used colors. As you can see, they're all small and sharpened and tiny. And then next to that, I have a notebook, and then I have a pencil case. And then over here, unfortunately, I can't really um, open this drawer as far as I can. So these ones are my less frequently used items. They're always placed in the back. I have my Sumi drawing ink, um, brown fine liners. I have my water brush pens. I have a um, smaller brushes for creating line art. I have brush pens in here, mostly black. I have some markers in here, which aren't alcohol markers. They're just different kinds of markers. This one's the Faber Castell Pit. And then I have an acrylic marker. And then these are some alcohol-based markers that I've decided to keep. I no longer have my Copic markers. Um, I only wanted to keep um, a small amount of them, so I decided to keep 
the Windsor and Newton and the Spectra. And then over here are some assortment of rulers. Underneath that is my drawer for wet media. And I'm really happy with how this turned out. I created these removable dividers out of balsa wood and it allows me to um, store my paints into different categories. So I have watercolors in here um, of different brands. Most of them are the Holbein Artist watercolors. I have some other brands in here as well. And next to that, I have my gouache, which are mostly Holbein as well. And I've divided them into oranges and yellows, reds and purples, and greens and blue. And I think the only one that's not Holbein is my Art Spectrum gouache. Next to that, I have a porcelain um, dipping sauce dish. I got this at the kitchen section of my thrift store, my local thrift store. And I like using porcelain for mixing paints because as you can see, it's still clean. You can easily remove the paint and it looks as if it's brand new and never been used. And then underneath that, I have my um, Ka Inur watercolor set. I also have some more of the porcelain um, dipping sauce dishes over there, which I also use for paint palettes. And at the very back, because I can't really access them as easily, I have some tape and then I have these plastic watercolor palettes. Next to that, I have some acrylic paints over here, just laid out like that. And then over here, I have some liquid inks in different colors. Um, these are all art spectrum, except for the Dr. P.H. Martin and the Liquitex ink. And I also have some black inks in here, different brands. I think this one's Winsor & Newton. And then this one's the only one that's not an ink, but it's special because it's a gold gouache. Next to that, I have my brushes and my plastic palette knives for mixing colors. I have more paints. This one is the Paper Mill Watercolor Paint Swatch Set. And then this one is the um, water-based gold pigment. And then this one is my dry gouache, which I got from Amazon. And then that's pretty much my wet media drawer. And the next drawer, I um, have papers, different kinds of papers, and they all come in pads. So I have A3 pads in here, like this one's a Canson Montval watercolor um, pad. This one's also a watercolor pad, but it's just a different size. I have a watercolor sketchbook. I have some Yupo paper, and I believe these ones are for hand lettering. Most of these ones I got from subscription boxes, so um, that's why they're all here and that's why they're mostly paper pads. And then these ones are size A4. These are all watercolor pads. I have a sketchbook over here by Fabriano. And then I've got some A5 pads. So this one's Yupo. I've got a marker one and then the rest are all watercolor. And then I've got some small ones, which are, um, a Yupo brand. And then I have a wooden pencil box which I got as a souvenir from my trip to Bali. Unfortunately this one doesn't have anything in here anymore. I'm not entirely sure what to do with it now but it's just in there because it fits. The next drawer I have random items that are kind of printed related or printer related but also not really. I have some printer paper here these ones um, are gold leaf, um, gold metal leaf that I purchased recently because I wanted to try them out. I also have some primed wood panels for um, new paintings, hopefully coming soon. I have some um, postcards or um, cards that you can draw on in here. And then next to that is this metal tin that has my printer inks. And like I said, these are all super random. It's not 
actually really organized, but I don't really know where to put all of these um, items. They don't really fit in anywhere, so they're kind of just sitting here at the moment. And then this drawer has my large papers. So I have large individual papers over here. I have a large pad. This is an A2 pad. These ones are a little bit smaller, but bigger than A3. This is my A3 portfolio. I have a cutting mat in black, and then I have these other mats that I use sometimes um, for cutting or for um, a mouse pad or sometimes for filming as well. And then the last drawer um, currently is empty. Similar principle to my shelf because that just allows me to buy more art supplies and experiment in the future as well. And that's pretty much it for my workspace. I think that is everything in there that is at least art related. There's a lot of there that's not super art related. For example, underneath my drawer, there is my makeup and then my cart, which actually does not have any art supplies. It's mostly hair products, um, some other skincare products, um, first aid kit. So I don't think that's super interesting. So I didn't go through that one, but I think that is everything for my workspace. This is what it looks like. I'm super happy with how it looks at the moment. Um, hopefully you guys liked it as well. And hopefully you liked seeing my workspace for 2020. I will link some of my old workspace tours in the card section of this video, as well as in the end screen of this video. So you can see potentially the evolution of my workspace because I have been decluttering my art supplies for years now. And this is where it's currently at. It's very hard to actually declutter. So I'm taking it um, slowly, um, one step at a time. And this is where it's currently at. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe for more videos, push that notification button to find out when I upload new videos. And thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you guys in my next one. Woo!